Hey there everyone, Foxy Fern here, and welcome to 5 more things I wish I knew before using the graph editor in Maya. These tips can speed up your workflow by using some built-in tools you may not have known about before. Don't forget to hit that like button and check out some other useful content in the description below. The first tip involves a workflow that integrates the channel box with the graph editor. I find that there are times where I want to modify the curves of multiple controls at once, but only on one axis. This can be a headache to manage when you have to click on every individual control's axis one at a time. You can make this so much easier to deal with by checking a single box in your Maya Preferences. Inside your Animation Preferences window, navigate to Settings Time Slider, where it says Channel Box Sync, make sure to check Sync Selection in Graph Editor. Now, when you highlight a value in your channel box, your graph editor will only display those axes. So what happens if you try to use that trick, but it's hard to see what's going on with all the curves on top of each other? Or maybe one curve has extreme values compared to another, making the graphs hard to evaluate. This is when toggling curve displays comes in handy. There are three buttons for this in your graph editor, display curves in absolute view, stacked view, and normalized view. These have the default hotkeys of 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Absolute view is what the graph editor defaults to, what you're probably the most used to. Stacked view comes in handy when your selected curves are on top of each other, but you'd like to modify one at a time. Normalized view shows all your curves as though they have the same maximum and minimum values. This can be a little confusing, but it helps when you are tweaking more than one curve at a time with extreme values. It gives you a sense of how the keys relate to each other within the curves. The stats boxes display a selected key's place in time and value. One neat trick you can do with these boxes is uniformly change the values or time of all your selected keys at once. If you want to move a group of keys a specific amount of frames, it can be easier to use this method. This way you know exactly how many keys everything has shifted. All you need to do is select your keys and then in the left box type a math formula. If you want to shift everything 5 keys later in time, type in plus equals 5. To move them earlier, type minus equals 5. You can even do multiplication. Say you wanted to speed up your entire animation to be 3 quarters of its current length, you would input times equals 0.75. These same methods can be applied to the values box for similar results. Using multiplication, you can reduce or amplify the motion of a curve. Keep in mind these formulas will always be relative to zero, so you want to pay attention to the location of the curves you're altering. That brings us to my absolute favorite tools to use. Yes, I have saved the best for last. It's a toss up which one I like better, but we'll start with the retime tool. This gives you a more detailed visual control over changing the timing of your animation. You can also scale sections of keys relative to one another instead of to zero, like the stats box does. When you select the tool, it prompts you to double click to add retime markers. Here's the simplest way to explain this. Whenever you drag a bar around, the keys on both sides of it are affected. If the bar is on the end, the keys outside of it will stay relative to one another, but will move in time with the bar. If you move a bar between two others, the keys on one side of it will compress, and on the other side, they'll stretch. This changes the timing in two sections at once. If you don't want this result, place a bar right next to the one you want to move, and it will pin the outside keys in place. An important thing to note about this method is that it will result in in-between keys. If you choose to snap the keys, it will alter your data, so baking will give you a proper result. Working with baked keys is a workflow that many people aren't used to, though. If that's the case for you, wait to use this tool until you're nearly finished with your animation. Our last useful tip is the region tool. This will put a box around your selected keys with four movable controls. You can either scale the values up and down or the timing of the selected keys left and right. Unlike the retime tool, the region tool respects your time snap setting. If snap is turned on, it will only scale keys by moving them to the nearest whole number. If you want a little more control over this though, you can turn off the time snapping by toggling the magnetic icon. If turning off snap, you'll likely want to bake down the keys again as with the retime tool. So there you have it, five more useful things about the graph editor that I definitely did not know soon enough. These tips, among others, have saved me hours of time. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and I'll be sure to share more useful tips in the future. Make sure to check out the first 5 Graph Editor Tips video if you haven't already. 
Feel free to ask any questions in the comments or give suggestions for future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, stay foxy.